Today we are comparing the iPhone 14 Pro Max 48 megapixel camera against its predecessors, all the way back to the 10s Max, to see how far the iPhone camera has come, and whether the 48 megapixel is a real deal or not. So Apple finally decided to upgrade the camera resolution on the iPhone to 48 megapixel after sticking with 12 megapixel for 7 years. I was thrilled when Apple announced the 48 megapixel during the event and after using it for about a month, I can say that it's definitely a real deal. So I thought, if someone wants to upgrade the iPhone to 14 Pro based on the camera performance, which iPhone should you upgrade from? Where is the sweet spot that you will see the obvious difference when upgrading? So let's bring in the predecessors. The iPhone 13 Pro Max, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the iPhone 10s Max. Basically all the Max models. Let's jump in. Let's start off with the main camera and even though the iPhone 14 Pro Max features a 48 megapixel main camera, by default it shoots 12 megapixel photos with pixel binning so it's basically the same resolution as the other iPhones. And at first all of them look pretty similar aside from the slight white balance difference. The details might look similar at first, but as we zoom in, you can see that the 10s Max is the odd one out. The details on the 10s Max are far behind the others, while the 11 Pro onwards has a very similar detail. This is likely because of Deep Fusion that was introduced alongside the iPhone 11. So what Deep Fusion does is it processes multiple frames to create one high quality image and this is the result of it. But one thing I noticed is that the iPhone 14 Pro Max seems to have less sharpening here which make it look the softest here. Here's another photo testing the dynamic range, and surprisingly every phone did a really good job here. The dynamic range is good even on the 10s Max with no deep fusion, but you will see the details are far behind the rest again, like the pattern on the vase here and the text on the textbook and look closely at the background on the 14 Pro. There's some background blur as well. And in the darker part of the photo, the iPhone 14 Pro Max really did a great job here. The lines on the pillow are really smooth while the others still look pretty mushy. For food photography, which the iPhones have never been known for taking appetizing photos, but in good lighting, they're not bad. They're actually pretty appetizing, with good contrast and good saturation. In a challenging lighting situation, I'm surprised that the 10s Max can still keep up this well. If you look closely, the details and noises are very similar across all phones. However, in the center, the logo on the glass tells a different story. The noise, the details, and contrast, and sharpness kept getting better and better on the newer phones to the point that the 14 Pro Max looks crystal clear. But if we were to go to the bottom of the glass, the photo from the 14 Pro Max is pretty blurred, and that's because the sensor on the 14 Pro is so huge that the plane of focus is so thin that things get blurred real fast. Oh, and in bad lighting situation, not a single iPhone makes any dish looks appetizing. They all lack contrast, brightness, and saturation. Now, onto the low light situation. These photos are shot with night mode off, and as you can see, they are all pretty similar except for the 10s Max. The details on the 10s Max really lags behind the other phones, like the details on the leaves where the 10s Max looks pretty mushy while the other still looks pretty crispy. And if you take a look closely at the noise level, you will see that the noise level kept getting better and better year by year. And this is with the night mode on. Except for the 10s Max of course, because there is no night mode available on this phone. It's only for 11 Pro onward. What a shame. So when turning on the night mode, the details on every photo increase by a margin. The overall brightness increases, noise levels are lower as well. Night mode and deep fusion is definitely a game changer. Alright, so we have only been shooting 12 megapixel photos so far. So what's the use of 48 megapixel sensor? For that, we're gonna have to shoot Pro Raw. And only iPhone 12 Pros onward can do that. So in this photo, the 12, 13, and 14 Pro are Pro Raw photos. 
Once again, all of them look pretty good, but we can clearly see the difference when we zoom in. The 48 megapixel really makes a huge difference. The details are far superior, and there are far less noise on the 14 Pro when compared to the 13 and 12. The 48 megapixel resolution is a real deal here. However, there's one huge downside to shooting Pro RAW, and that's the file size. The 48 megapixel Pro RAW took up three times as much space as 12 megapixel does. The size hovers around 75 megabytes of photo, which only took around a thousand-ish photo to fill out a 128 gigs model. So be aware of that. Let's move on to the other lenses. For ultra wide cameras, well, there's none on the 10s Max, so we'll be comparing the other four here. And again, they all look pretty similar at first, except for the deeper green on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the warmer tone on the 14 Pro Max. The details between the four aren't much far off as well, even when zooming in. There's not much of a difference here except for the smoother chord lines and a little clearer structure on the fence on the 14. Now let's talk about the telephoto. Each iPhone tends to have a slight optic difference when it comes to telephotos. Because up until the iPhone 11 Pro, the telephoto lenses are 2 times optical zoom. For 12 Pro, it's 2.5 times, and 13 and 14 Pros are 3 times optical zoom. So it's going to be a little different on each phone. Anyways, here's the native focal length of each iPhone. And it's obvious that the phones with longer lenses will win here. The digital zoom maxes out at a different focal ranges as well. It's 10 times on the 10s and 11, 12 and a half times on the 12 Pro Max, and 15 times on the 13 and 14 Pro. But there's one thing that really surprises me, and that's the 15 times zoom on the 14 Pro versus the 13 Pro. It's dramatically better than the 13. And if you remember at launch, Apple did not mention any improvements on the telephoto camera except for the low light performance because of the photonic engine. So it's probably the same hardware with a better performance. Nice. And lastly, the portrait mode. And on the 10s Max, we are forced to use the 2x telephoto lens for portrait mode. There's just no option to switch to the main camera like the other iPhone does. And the results are as expected. The newer iPhone is going to take a better photo. It's cleaner, the subject background separation feels more natural, and aside from the exposure on the iPhone 12 Pro Max being totally different from others, there seems to be some green tint that kinda gives the cinematic vibe to the photo on the iPhone 14 Pro, which I kinda like if I wanted to go for that look. So that's the comparison between 5 generations of iPhone cameras. What do you think? For me, if you're rocking the 10s Max and looking for an upgrade, this is the time. It's definitely worth the upgrade in every way. Not just the camera, but the performance, the battery life, everything. But for the other phones, not so much. The 11 Pro Max in 2022 still feels like a solid phone to me. If the battery is still good, of course. But what about you? Would you upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Or if you already did, which phone did you upgrade from? Comment down below. And like if you like this video, sub if you want to see more of these contents in the future. See you guys next time. Stay safe.